Hey everyone, I'm Dark Water, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. So last time we had our actual first date with Emmy, technically, and it went pretty well, I would have to say. But at the end of the date, um, it seemed like Emmy was injured a little, like her seemed like her leg hurt, but she kind of brushed it off and said it was nothing, she was fine. And then we went on a run with her the next morning, and after the and during the run she seemed okay. But after the run, she really seemed like her leg was hurting more again. So we kind of insisted that she see the uh, doc, uh, well the nurse. I keep wanting to call him a doctor, but he's a nurse. But she said she's fine and she doesn't want to see him, and she's gonna worry or something like that. So here we are at the nurse after the run, and she said she had to go do something, which obviously was a lie, but she's just avoiding the guy because she doesn't want him to know that she's hurt or something for whatever reason, I don't know. But I think that we should tell him what's going on because I'm kind of worried about Emmy now. So here we go. Oh, I don't see Emmy with you. She's not sick again, is she? From the tone of his voice, I don't think the nurse is expecting me to say, yes, she's ill. Uh, she said that she's forgotten to do something, and so she had to skip out. But she'll see you later, did I? The nurse heaves an exasperated sigh. I want to just leave that girl. Hmm? She's been avoiding me. Yesterday, she was in and out of here without even taking off her prosthetics. And now this. Well, at least it's not just me Emmy doesn't want worrying. That's a comfort, I guess. Still, I feel like I should say something about her leg. I said I'd lie for her, but she really needs to see him. Now that you mention it, she was limping pretty badly today. And less not as well. The nurse's eyes narrow at the words last night. Oh, we weren't doing anything. And what exactly were you two doing last night? We were, uh, on a date. The nurse raises his eyebrows as if surprised. Really? Interesting. Huh? Oh, nothing. His gaze turns thoughtful and then he grins at me. You don't think you could use some of that boyfriend charm to get her to come see me today, could you? Of course. I was planning on do that, doing that anyway. I think she's really hurt and just pretending she isn't. Mm, yes, she does that. I'm afraid I'll make her stop running. Will you? I don't like to, but if it's bad enough that she's been limping, well, I guess I'll have to see what's wrong for myself before I make that call. Oh, I say. I mean, allowed to run? Perish the thought. I don't know if she'd be able to function without running. That's for sure. No wonder if she's reluctant to admit anything's wrong. Well, I'll make sure she sees you. You know, if you ignore the problem, it's just going to get worse, and then you will have to stop running. Good. Oh, and before I forget... He grins at me again in what feels like a vaguely threatening manner. Don't forget that I know what medications you're on. You be careful around Emmy, got it? Wow, he looks serious too. As serious as Brock. Got it. Don't hurt Emmy. Wouldn't dream of it. Grand. I'd hate for you to be late. Huh? Light, as in the late Heseyo Nikai. He frowns briefly, dissatisfied. Sounded better in my head. Well, at any rate, get out of here before you miss your first class, you rascal. You got things to do, I'm sure. Shoo. As I leave, I notice the nurse pulling out his phone and dialing a number. Mako, your daughter's being a pain in the ass again. I better head back to my room or I really will be late. Hey, wasn't he supposed to check my heart rate? I guess I'm fine. The lunch bell sounds and I bring myself out of the stupor I slipped into during the morning's classes. My lack of sleep last night coupled with the increased pace of this morning's run has left me a little exhausted. Despite that, I find myself skipping stairs up to the roof. There's a thrill of excitement now, in addition to the pleasure one gets from eating lunch with one's friends. Oh really, what would you be excited about? True, both Emmy and Ren are still my friends, but Emmy has become more than that now. Rin is back in her usual spot on the roof, almost as if she's never been absent. 
Feeling better, I take it. I raised eyebrows my reward for speaking. Better than what? Uh, better than you felt yesterday. Right, because she wasn't up on the roof yesterday. Rin gives my question some serious thought. I'm not sure. I think I might have felt rather good for some of yesterday, but it's all fuzzy. Too much cold medicine? Well, I was asleep, and that usually is pretty good. I got you, Rin. I feel you. But I can't remember what it feels like to be asleep because I'm not conscious for it. It's a real problem. Then again, if I knew how good it felt, I might not sleep anymore. But this way, I keep trying, so I guess that's how I can keep from being overtired. An eternal mystery to keep you sleeping at night? Maybe mystery is the wrong word. Intangibility might be the proper way to describe it. I see. Yeah, Rin, I get it. Sleeping does feel good, except that you're unconscious for it, so you don't really know how good it actually feels. Ah, oh, Rin, what could have been? No, I don't see it all. I have no idea what she's talking about, but that's okay, since I rarely do. Do you remember what sleeping feels like? Like yesterday, do you remember what you felt like sleeping yesterday? Well, I actually didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday. Hmm. Maybe that's because you remember subconsciously. Actually, I think I was worrying about Emmy. Doesn't Emmy worry enough about herself? I hadn't considered that, but it gives me pause. True, but would she ask for help if she nutted it? Ren frowns and I raise an eyebrow. Will I get a proper answer? Probably not. Is there something she should be asking for help with? Her leg, for starters. This seems to catch Ren's interest. Leg? It's hurt, but she won't see the nurse about it. Ren shakes her head in disapproval. You have to make her. Like she makes me go to class, for her own good. Otherwise she could lose her legs again, and that's just too weird. Losing things twice. Especially if you don't find them again to begin with. Unless prosthetics are the same as finding something. But that's a different kind of loss, isn't it? I think so. Hmm, I wonder. Wonder what? Amy seems to have snuck up on Rin and I, though Rin doesn't seem especially surprised. Which in itself is unsurprising, I suppose. Rin manages to sit herself upright quite expertly, throwing her upper body forward and using her momentum to right herself. Your leg, how's it feel? That earns me a frown and a bit of a glare. It's okay, I think. Not worth worrying about. Tell that to the nurse. He's quite insistent that you visit him, you know. Emmy pouts like I've just told her she's been grounded. He worries too much. It's not a big deal, it's just a little soreness. I try to resist rolling my eyes in exasperation. If it's nothing, then you should have no problem seeing him, right? Emmy narrows her eyes suspiciously. Did he put you up to this? Well, maybe. A little. But that's not the point. I would have reminded you to see him anyway. It would be terrible to see you really hurt and not doing anything about it. That would make it worse and I don't really want to see you hurt, you know? Call me crazy, but I kind of would prefer to see you happy and healthy. With each statement, Emmy's frown fades a little more, until eventually she's grinning, albeit a little shyly. Well, if you're going to put it that way, then I guess I'll have to see him. Otherwise, you'll keep worrying, and then I'll never hear the end of it, right? That's right. I'll keep bugging you about it, and that might put a damper on our dates. How's the food, Isaiah? Talk to the nurse, Amy. How was your day, Isaiah? Talk to the nurse, Amy. Isaiah, I think I'm ready to go up there. Talk to the nurse, Amy. See, it doesn't work that well. Emmy giggles at my high-pitched rendition of her own voice and gives me an affectionate shove. And then I topple off the roof and die. My voice is not the high jerk. I thought it was pretty accurate. Oh god, look at Emmy's face. Look at that. Emmy. Emmy and I stare at Ren for a while before I burst into laughter. Emmy crosses her arms and huffs, mock offended. You're about jerks. Just for clumsiness from you, young woman. I'm stunned that you would call me, of all people, a jerk. Honestly, I just... I don't know what to think. Emmy sticks her tongue out at me. You ass. 
So, Elaine, how's the art club these days? Ren, seemingly as surprised by the sudden change of topic as I am, takes a minute to think before answering. I believe it is okay. Although Nomiya keeps telling me to work harder. But I don't think he understands my methods. He always thought of Kamiya as slightly creepy. Ren ponders that statement for a while. I've never really noticed. But I don't pay much attention to him most days, so maybe that's why. Well, and you might. Thinking of joining his sale? What? Nah. I've already decided to join the club. Really? Which one? Well, it's not really much of a club, to be honest. Oh, you joined the tea club? No, I joined the science club, I think. I mean, it looks highly confused. We have a science club? Uh, not really. It's just me. I see. Oh, that's not the club. I sit in the other room reading books. No, I mean, it's just me and me too. I'm just the only student so far. Mutu, really? A thought strikes her. Oh, is that what you were talking about yesterday? You were meeting with Mutu? Yeah, there was a first meeting, I guess. Emmy giggles. Nerd. Hey, I can't help being clever. You know, I could have used your help years ago. You should have had your heart attack early in life, you say. I laugh and then realize this is probably one of the very rare times I've laughed about my heart attack. Hindsight. Yeah. The ringing of the bell ends our conversation. Hmm, guess we better go. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Lorraine. You too. Rain has apparently begun to doze off, so Emmy gives her a sharp bump. I almost had it. Sorry, but you need to go to class. I disagree, but maybe if I nap in class, I'll get it this time. Changing location is sometimes helpful for that kind of thing. Neither Emmy nor I bother asking what it is. As we arrive at my classroom, Emmy gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway, Rin in tow. Ah, Misha and Shizune. I haven't seen you two for a while. What are you planning? I turn to enter the classroom to be met by the duo of Shizune and Misha. Dot dot dot. Misha seems to be fighting a losing battle to keep from breaking into a fit of giggles while she translates Shizune's latest rant. Why would it plays nice thrill to see how well you managed to make new friends and forge relationships, and with such acuity too, Yui Chan. I think the last part was probably Misha. Dot dot dot. We nevertheless feel compelled to politely remind you that public displays of affection are strictly forbidden. Really? That's a disappointing, Xu Chan. By section 8 of the Code of Conduct laid out in the student handbook. Dot dot dot. In this case, however, ignorance of the law may be your excuse as we are feeling lenient. Dot dot dot. And the paperwork required to punish the both of you would only add to the already mountainous volume of work which confronts us the sole members of the student council. And besides, these two are adorable together. Dot dot dot. Therefore, consider this a formal warning, and please refrain from such displays in the future. At least when Shizune can see you, He-Chan. This whole spiel is so patently ridiculous that I can't help but reply in the same pompous manner. We laugh for one to fail enlightened. I apologize profusely for my rash actions and will strive to contain my bystander impulses which I fear impel me towards such inappropriate displays of public affection. It is hardly my wish to burden an already overworked student council with such petty matters, and I will do my best to make our lives easier in the matter in the future. At least when she do the name's watching. This last line is delivered with a wink to Misha, who finally loses control of her laughter. Wah! Well said, he Chan. Chuckling a little myself, we enter the classroom. Class is uneventful, and after the final bell rings, I find myself alone with Mutu again. So, it looks like we've all assembled for the second meeting of the science club. Or is it the first? What do you think? Should we count yesterday as a meeting? Well, we did form the club yesterday, didn't we? That seems like club business, so we can safely call yesterday a meeting. Mutu smiles in his usual stilted and awkward way. I wonder if the muscles in his face are just not shaped correctly to let him smile naturally. You really do have a knack for this, I think. Logical thought processes, that is. I guess so. 
A scientist speaks with authority, Haseo. The answer here is yes, I do. When the word wants to know how it works, we tell it, even if all we've got is a decent hypothesis. But we must sound certain anyway, because we're the authorities on the subject, right? He chuckles to go along with his awkward smile at his awkward joke. I'm doing my best not to grimace, but I don't think it's being too successful. That's entirely false, of course. We know a lot, sure, but nobody's an expert on how the world works, if only because nobody can be sure. With no certainty, there are no experts. But we like to pretend, sometimes. There's some things we can be certain of, right? Yes, but no. We know gravity is there, for example. To illustrate, Mutu picks up a pencil and drops it. See? Still there. But it's good to check every once in a while. You never know when it might disappear. That's why you'll still see researchers mucking about with gravity. We're pretty sure we know how it works, but there's always a chance that something isn't how we think it is. So you check, and check, and check. That's science in a nutshell, Haseo. The whole time I've listened, feeling rather spellbound. Muchi seems to really be passionate about this stuff, I think. It's hard to tell sometimes. How the world works. How humans work. How the universe works. All these questions to be answered. And depending on what I go into, maybe I could even figure out a way to fix my heart. That said, I don't think that's a real priority for me. Besides, as we start discussing the book he gave me yesterday, I find myself more and more interested in that than in my heart condition. That's cool. I never read that book. I think he gave him uh, a history of time or something like that. History of the universe. Something. I never read it, but I was kind of interested in what, reading it myself. Before we even realize it, an hour has gone by. Well, let's call this meeting over for now, okay? We'll have another meeting tomorrow, or uh, the day after. He considers this for a moment. Call it the day after. I've got a lot of grading to do. A lot of Fs to give out. Okay, see you then. As I exit the classroom, I realize that I don't really have anything to do tonight. Amy and I didn't make plans, so... I guess I'll go to the library. It beats doing homework in my room anyway. The library always seems cooler than the rest of the building. Probably to keep the books from getting damaged by excessive heat and humidity. Books are sturdy objects, but if you want to keep them in good condition, it takes a little effort. I've got several books that are so well-worn the pages are barely clinging to the spine. It seems impossible for them to still be usable, but if you handle them with care... I make my way to the main desk where I spot Yuko busying herself with something or another. She smiles at me as I enter in waves. Hello, Haseo. Good to see you again. What are you looking for this time? Nothing in particular, I guess. Didn't really feel like going to back, back to my room is all. Yuko nods. Well, if you're unoccupied, maybe you could help me look for something. Sure, what do you need? Yuko brings her finger to her lips and looks around furtively. She seems to be looking for eavesdroppers. Come closer. Oh, that's really close, Yuko. Too bad I couldn't go on the Yuko route. I take a few hesitant steps forward while feeling distinctly unnerved. Yuko lowers her voice to a confidential whisper. I'm on the trail of the Yamaku cat burglar. The what? Shh. The walls have ears, I say. Or they might. But listen, those missing books, remember them? Uh, yeah. Well, they weren't missing. They were stolen. I'm convinced of it. I remember you saying something of the sort earlier, but how do you know? Yuko leans in closer and have possible whispers even lower. Because I found one of his hiding places. You did what? Yuko looks triumphant. I found one of his stashes. It was under one of the stairwells in the boys' dorm. Three books I've been looking for, all there. I suspected a thief before, but this proves it. So you, did you take back the books? Luca looks as if I just suggested she walk around naked. Which really wouldn't have been a bad suggestion, but I digress. Are you nuts? He can't know I'm onto him. He might go look at the ground and invade capture. Uh-huh. So what do you need my help with then? You could cast another glance around the library and leans in closer. You got a spy for me. Spy? Yeah, like when you're in the dorms, you know? Keep an eye out for suspicious activity. What constitutes suspicious, anyway? 
I mean, Kenji is a pretty suspicious dude, but I'll wager he barely goes to class, much less sneaks in the library to pay for books. I don't know. I mean, he had a lot of books with him last time I saw him, and one of them was about, about cryptography, which is exactly the book that she was looking for. I wouldn't be surprised if it was him. Still, what's the harm in saying yes? At the least, they'll get me out of this weird conversation. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. You go straight up and claps excitedly. Great. Now hurry up and talk about something else in case someone comes in. How's the school treating you? Uh, pretty well, actually. I've been running in the mornings with... Emmy Irobezaki, right? Uh, yeah. How do you know? I was trying to keep it a secret. I served you two in the tea house, remember? I deduced that if you were going to run with anyone, it would probably be her. She looks pleased with herself. Impressive. Most impressive. Anyway, yes, we've been running in the mornings. And uh, we kind of started dieting. You go clap your hands together excitedly. Really? That's great. I'll bet you two are great together. I love seeing people find one another like that, you know? I even thought to myself when you walked into the Shanghai that one time. I wonder if that kid will wind up with one of those girls. Maybe even me. Really? Yuga doesn't seem to notice my somewhat weirded out tone and nods affirmatively. Yep, I could tell that you'd wind up with one of them, you know. Or me, if you didn't pick one of them. I've got an eye for that sort of thing. Of course. The expression droops slightly. I'm not so good at it myself. Oh, I'm sure that's not true. Walk around naked. It'll do you wonders. Oh, it's true. I met this guy once. We got along really great, but it turned out he was younger than me. And then I had to break up with him because he was younger. And that was kind of weird, but not terribly so. What was really weird was that they did disappear one day, and I've not seen him since then. Huh, that does seem kind of old. Doesn't it? I hope it wasn't something I did. I feel compelled to reassure her. I'm sure it wasn't. I intend to try and calm her down further, but they both was jumping surprised at the ringing suddenly coming from my pocket. Yugo sighs to steady yourself as I pull the phone from my pocket. I feel a little sheepish for indirectly causing the incident. Emmy, what's up? I don't think I, would, I haven't called your phone before, so I didn't know if this number would work or whether you would pick up and I can't. Wow there, Emmy, slow down. What's wrong? There's a pause on the other side of the line, during which I can hear Emmy trying to control her breathing in order to calm down. Something's got terribly agitated and it's starting to agitate me. Can you just... Can you stop by... Like now, or shortly after now? I really, really need to talk to you. There's a ton of pleading in the last sentence that I don't think I've heard from her. Of course, I'll be right there. Hold steady, okay? In my increasingly agitated state, I've apparently started saying things that don't really quite make sense. Okay, I will be okay. See you soon. I pressed the button to end the call before slipping the phone back into my pocket and apologized to Yuko for running off and run off. Alright, well this seems like a good time to stop. So, I'm going to say thank you guys for watching. Thanks for being cool and I'll see you next time.